Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, I'm going to do a painting today which is going to be autumnal, attractive, lovely warm colour. So first of all, <clears throat> what we're going to do is prepare a background and um, I've got a piece of stretched watercolour paper here um, which I think is Fabriano, it's Fabriano Artistico, which is nice and it's stretched and um, you can see that how that's done in a video um, somewhere in the back catalogue. And I'm going to be using Burnt Sienna, um, Cobalt Blue, Windsor Violet and Quinacridone Gold for this background. Plus I'm going to use some salt and I'm going to use some um, saran wrap or cling film. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the biggest brush I can lay my hands on at the moment, which is my Isabelle Petit Cri, which is um, a squirrel brush. And I'm just going to wet the whole surface of this piece of paper, reasonably generously. And um, it should be okay. The, <clears throat> the um, the paper is uh, pretty good at handling wet in wet, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And in any case, this is all very, um, what's the word, Im impromptu <laughs> or whatever. Anyway, so now this is my Ron Ranson um, Pro Art Hake, uh, a little bit nibbled around the edges here. One day I, I had a little bit of an impatient moment and um, I gave it a bit of a haircut. It didn't seem to make much difference. And I'm just going to drop a uh, very liquid paint in. Don't try to control it. As soon as you, as soon as your brush touches the paper, um, hopefully you'll relax. Uh, I try to do that and uh, just let it, let it go. I'm going to put some violet in the middle. I'm rather hoping that we're going to have some nice, um, shadows because this is going to have, um, I hope, a um, spider's web in the middle. So let's put the quinacridone gold in here and put a bit up here too. I think we want some more of Violet. I'll just wash my brush out. This is one of those, the kind of thing that you can't really control. You have absolutely no idea how this is going to turn out. That's the whole point. So we put some more of that there. Some more of that. Okay. Maybe a bit more blue, perhaps. A bit of, uh, this is Quar Phthalo Blue, which has a very interesting relationship with other colours. So I'll just pop a bit of that in, just for the heck of it. See how it goes. Okay, now <clears throat> then we will um, put some salt. Don't forget, watercolour always dries lighter. So we'll put some coarse grain salt. See how it's sucking up the paint, the pigment goes in. <clears throat> and then we'll get some fine, fine grain salt and chuck that on. And you can see that doing an interesting spattery, wattery thing. And the thing is, it doesn't really matter what this turns out like once it's dry because we're going to paint over the top of it anyway. So I have a piece of saran wrap. Stunt that up nicely. 
I discovered a while ago that uh, cling film works far better as a texturizer if you screw it up first. And the reason why I discovered that was because we used to um, give away a lot of eggs when we had a lot of chickens. And we used to give them away to my neighbor. And I used to give them to her on a flat tray, a tray, you know, an egg tray, not a box. So there was no top to it. And I used to wrap it up with cling film so that the eggs didn't fall out. And after she'd taken the eggs from me, a few days later, she would give me back the cling film, the saran wrap that she had taken off of the eggs. And she would roll it up onto a tea towel and then she would give me back the cling film rolled up on the tea towel and I'd have to then give her back the tea towel. So it sort of went backwards and forwards all the time. Anyway, so I ended up with a lot of crinkly cling wrap. And one day I was doing this and I happened to pick up the crinkly cling film and I used it instead of the regular stuff and it worked really well. So ever since then, ever since uh, Nicole's cling film ran, ran out and we've only got half the number of chickens now so we don't give away so many eggs. Anyway, well, that passes the time of day, doesn't it? Um, there we are, we're gonna leave that. You can see already it's starting to go a bit paler. Don't know what that's going to turn out like, but if that one doesn't fit the bill, which I think it probably will, You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to um, there we go. That's better. Um, caught the air under there. I didn't put it down carefully enough, but that's fine now. Um, if that one doesn't work out, I'll use this one, which I did a while ago and I haven't got around to using it yet, but that will be fine. And in preparation for the next step, let's get rid of that for the minute and put that over there somewhere flat to dry, because that will take all night to dry and you mustn't touch it, uh, it spoils it. So if that one doesn't work out, then we'll use this one, which is very similar, but it doesn't have any purple in it at the moment. And I've done my design here, uh, yeah, I didn't do it on paper. I did it straight onto tracing paper. So when you're doing something like this, the way to do it, get yourself a piece of tracing paper or baking parchment or whatever you have handy, tissue will do. Um, and then you can use that to sketch onto so that you get the design right. Because what you're going to do is you're going to look for shapes that you can develop. So for example, here, I've got an area which I think will turn very nicely into the head of a um, what do you call it, um, cow parsley. So I've drawn that in, indicated that. Here, this I think would turn very nicely, this shape, into a poppy seed head. So I've drawn the poppy in there. There's another one down here. And then I'm going to put another um, twiggy thing of cow parsley type thing up there. And then these shapes here, I'm going to turn those into leaves against the blue sky and the texture. And these other dots and things, they're like um, seeds or things floating around in the air. And then once I've got my scaffolding in place, so to speak, then I'm going to put in a couple of uh, spiders, spiders webs. And the reason why I wanted to try another one is I've put some purple in because I think the purple in the center might be nicer for the spiders webs. But it might not be, so we'll see how that one turns out. Um, as far as doing the spider's webs go, um, I'm going to use some white ink, Winsor & Newton white ink, and I'm going to draw the spider's webs in um, using a pen, which I have here. This is just an ordinary dip pen. It's a cheap plastic handle with a fine nib, anything would do, and or um, I might try using my um, glass pen, or I might use both. Either of those would work, as would also work a, 
a gel pen like this one, Sigmo. This particular specific one is getting a little bit tired, so that would this particular one wouldn't work very well because it's almost empty. But a new one would. It would do a good job, I think, of drawing the white lines. So at, alternatively, you could of course mask them out and then paint over and then rub away the masking fluid. But I think I would prefer to do it this way this time. So I'm going to go away now and wait for that to dry and then come back and then we'll draw the design onto the prepared background. Okay, so I'm back now after having waited all night for these uh, this to dry. And in the end, what I did was I did, I prepared three more of these backgrounds because I do use them quite a lot and um, they're useful for all sorts of things. So when you're on a roll, um, it's a good idea to, since you're mixing up large quantities of um, paint to do one background, I always find I feel like I want to do more than one. So that's what I did. And these are all roughly the same. You can keep the cling film for use again. And um, then you take it off and then you can just scrape off the, the loose salt that sometimes slightly sticks to the paper. Um, and uh, I find that uh, an old Ikea card cut in half is a good, good uh, solution to that problem. Best thing you can do with an Ikea card. Um, so she, whose studio is entirely kitted out from top to bottom with Ikea furniture, very utilitarian furniture, but very, 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 very useful. Um, anyway, so that's, that's that one. And um, that's interesting, isn't it? Because you can see already we've got some lovely stems here for dried um, stalks and uh, seed heads and all sorts of things going up into the sky. And it's very inspiring. Um, you've got half of your design there already prepared for you. So that's number one. And then this one had a bit more purple in it. And um, so that's that's quite nice. It's a different, slightly different mood. So I'll just scrape off the salt from that too. Have a look at the video on um, paper stretching, which I'll put a link to that um, below and also if you take a look at our blog on the website dianenton.com, you'll find that's linked to when you go to the blog for this particular painting. Um, and then the number, third one that I did yesterday is this one, which came out quite dramatic, quite dramatically. That's amazing, actually. I think that was the first one. Paper's come a bit loose there, so the salt's got down behind it, but it's not important. So there we are. So we've got those three to choose from. And um, also the one that I started with, which was that one, which has uh, probably got more autumnal color to it than the ones that I did afterwards. So I'm not quite sure which one to use now, really. Um, these are almost pictures on their own, aren't they? You could almost say, wow, that's an abstract landscape or something. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put those aside, the new ones, we'll come back to that and I'm going to go back to this one because I'd already started to do my design on there. Now to draw these in initially, I'm going to use watercolor pencils and um, I have a set of watercolour pencils, which I'll just quickly show you here, which belongs to Tamsin. She's had this since she was about nine, which is longer than she cares to remember. It's a Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura set, and it's still not only in almost untouched condition, so she was not that much of a, an ah. Uh, <laughs> she was very, very careful and only use them very lightly. So that's great because now I can work my way through them. Um, anyway, so uh, what was I going to say? Yes, so they're quite old, but they still work fine. So to do this drawing on here, I'm going to use a watercolor pencil. And the reason why is because 
If you use a watercolour pencil to um, do the drawing, then when you come in with the watercolour, you'll find that um, any lines will just melt away with the water. So now um, this, these pencils are too fat to go into my regular um, sharpener, so I'm going to use my pencil plane for this. This was a birthday present from Tamsin. It's quite interesting. It's uh, made of brass and it's got a little screw knob there which holds this sharp blade in place. It's just like the sort of plane you use on wood, but tiny, obviously. It has a little optional case. And it, um, obviously you can sharpen any size of pencil. So, and it, it's very economical because it doesn't carve away so much of the, of the lead or the colour because it just, well, it just sharpens it a bit. I find that wonderful. That's really a useful thing. So, um, okay, so let's see if I can draw this design. <coughs> The tracing is just a kind of guide, really. I'm not going to uh, follow it exactly. So we'll just have to be brave and come in with some pencil sketches. And I thought I would have some... I'll just move this for a sec. Um, cow parsley head up here. I'm not going to draw in all the details, just the basic outline. And then I thought this would be here a poppy head, poppy seed head. And then around here, just going to follow that irregular line. I might do this with sponge, paint that with sponge, perhaps. And um, I think I thought there was a Another seed head. Where was that? There's that one there. And then um, we need some leaves. So we we'll just draw the outlines to the leaves. This could be kind of beech leaves there, perhaps. And then some of these circles could reinforce them a bit and they could be berries. So you could, I suppose you could say this was kind of abstract. I think that's a bit of a posh word, really. I'm going to put in some, I've got these mushrooms here, uh, but what I'm looking for in my little box is not the mushrooms, but 
hazelnuts. Cool, aren't they? Oh, they're falling out. So, yeah, they have kind of little hats. And then I had some ivy, ivy leaves, they're rather nice. And maybe we'll put some ivy leaves over here, perhaps kind of overlapping. And then maybe we'll bring in some berries, some ivy berries over the top of this. Maybe we'll have some oak leaves down here, perhaps, or maple. Um, beech leaves are really good this time of year, but I know that a lot of you are really used to beautiful maple leaves. I'm not necessarily very good at drawing them being as I'm from the other side of the planet. Um, okay, so let me see. Now what I wanted to do, according to my drawing here, was I needed a scaffolding. So this is the scaffolding. We have some more lines coming down here for some other seed head bearing thing, and then a line coming down here. And then we need something coming up the middle at a different angle. Try to make it not the same angle as either of those. So it's going to have to go over there like that. This one's going to come down there like that. And then oh, I wanted another seed head so we could, could call this one a thistle. Rather than a poppy seed, we make this one into a bit of a spiky, thistly thing. And then here we're going to put um, the a spider's web and we'll probably put another one up here somewhere. And bearing in mind Roland Hilda's uh, encouragement to not fill every inch of the paper with design. I'm going to leave this bit here empty and we'll see what happens when we get down that far. Okay, so as you can see, I've kind of followed that. And maybe we want one more of these down here. Leave this bit empty. Uh, now, to paint this, I'm going to use some colours from my Viviva colour sheets. This is a special um, set that we've had done in collaboration with Viviva, and it's got our name on it, Diane Anton Studio. There's a set of 16 colours in here, and um, at the back there's a little message from us encouraging you to relax, breathe and create and so on. And this is a wonderful thing for you to buy if you want to support us. Um, you can get it from our website, 
if you just go to dianeanton.com. And um, I really like these colors because they're very strong, powerful colors and um, <clears throat> ideal for this kind of thing. So we're going to be using things like burnt umber, burnt sienna, vermilion, and um, these kinds of colors. It's, it's not that when it comes out, it's much brighter than that, uh, obviously. So we will be working with those and possibly also with some of my regular paints over here. So I've got my cobalt blue, Windsor and Newton, um, Windsor violet, quinacridone gold, burnt sienna, potter's pink, and so on, and olive green. And you don't have to have these because these colors will certainly give you a good result. So let's pop all these vegetables away for a minute. And um, yeah, to do the painting, as far as brushes go, I recommend the uh, um, Zen Art Black Tulip set of six brushes, which you can get for 20 something dollars. They're pretty good for that price and they ship them worldwide. So you can go to our link to get those. I also use um, Drawwell Japanese golden brushes, which you can get direct from them. If you are keen enough to contact them direct, they will ship them to you at a very reasonable price. And that's great. I don't make any money out of that. Um, I'm also going to be using a Kuretake water pen, water brush. Um, which I find very easy to use and it's quicker, a little bit quicker. So for me, when I'm demonstrating, that's quite handy. I've got my jar of water at hand. Here, mason jar, um, piece of toweling to wipe off my brushes on. And I think that's about it. So I'm going to take a breather and come back in a second and start with the painting. Okay, so I always have a piece of spare paper at hand to test out the colors that I'm going to use. And I'm going to start painting these leaves with vermilion. So that's what the vermilion looks like when it comes from the color sheets, which is a wonderful color. And I'm going to just drop that in using the water brush to a leaf shape, which I prepared earlier. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my quinacridone gold and just add that in places. And then a little bit of Windsor Violet, which I'm just going to drop in a little bit like that. Then I'm going to take my um, Chinese, Japanese uh, bamboo pen and scratch in the veins like that. And then we'll just let that uh, mix and mingle a bit and we'll get a fairly realistic <clears throat> looking leaf based on this lovely vermilion color, which is going to be a beautiful contrast to the blue. And you can add a little bit more of it if you want it to be really nice and bright like that. And I really like putting a bit of a bit of purple in for a shadow. Sometimes I might come up the middle like that. And then here we could put a, a berry or two just overlapping like that. We finish that off later with some stems once it's, once it's dry. And uh, put another vermilion leaf down here. bit of quinacridone gold and you can you can sit down to do this carry on building it up sometimes you can put the quinacridone in first and remember that in nature most leaves aren't perfect in the sense of they they have bits missing and they have 
burnt bits, dark bits, eaten bits, bits that holes, stuff like that. So come away from the idea that it should be neat and tidy. That's ridiculous, okay? Doesn't look convincing. Maybe you don't want convincing, but um, anyway, so I'm just painting in some shapes that resemble leaves. With these three colors, because three colors, when they blend, they'll give you lots of lovely different tones and things. And if you just scratch in the veins when the paint is just sinking in and beginning to, to dry, what happens is the pigment goes into the indentation that you're scratching into the paper and you get either a light line or a dark line depending on exactly when you've scratched into it. Since we're working on uh, the vermilion type colours, I'm going to um, engage with the maple down here. Try to keep some of the nice blends that you had from your random randomness before. With the salt and everything. And you don't always want to do the veins and let the pencil show through from underneath too. You don't need to rub out the pencil, like we said before. Now, I'm going to do a little mixture of potter's pink and green for this stem here. And it's going to go over the watercolour pencil, like I said, and it will um, make it soften up a little bit. And then I'm going to take my ink. I've got some nice ink here, sepia ink. And uh, this is the way it goes. You, this is why you need all of your things at hand because you might decide you're going to do something a little bit different to what you had intended. So I've put the stem in there and I'm going to get my um, glass pen and then I'm going to just draw in hopefully with the glass pen, some um, some dried seed heads. I don't know quite why that's not working as well as it usually does. Oh, there we go, it's holding it on. And then I think we'll just blur that a little bit, pick up some of the extra that we had there. Okay, now um, let's do some of these berries in a nice bright red, nice clean bright red vermilion again from Viviva. Make them all different sizes. And then you can use your pen perhaps to, oops, Just draw the stalks. This one too. I 
think I heard the coffee just finishing. Now if you just take a, a wet brush, you can go over these uh, watercolour pencil lines and just give yourself a nice um, soft faded stem there. You don't need to add anything at all unless you want to. And you could pop in a little bit of ink perhaps in places to darken it down here and there. We'll just leave it faint because it's in the background. I'm going to do another leaf here. I think I heard the coffee machine finishing, so I'm just going to pop over and get myself a cup of coffee. Okay, so um, I'm going to, I think I'll just do this thistle here and uh, try painting that in ink to start with. gives us a nice brown and um, I have uh, another little thing that I use a lot which is my uh, Karat Aquarel Stettler Karat Aquarel watercolour pencil which is really nice for making darks when something is wet. You can Use this watercolour pencil to give you some very striking contrasts. And you see how dark that comes out. So for something like this that just wants to be highly contrasty, that's ideal, lots of texture. You can even dip it into the water to make it actually like a paint, paintbrush. So that's kind of fun. And now let me see. Oh, I need a quick slurp. Um, So a few more leaves up here we have. If you add Windsor Violet to Vermilion, you get a really rich chestnut brown, as you can see. And then you can use the violet again to give you shadow around the bottom edge, which will blend in really nicely. Then you come back again with some more vermilion and that will sit very satisfactorily next to it. Don't forget to scratch in your veins, which makes a big difference and is super fun. And if you, as I said, if you do it at the right moment, you can actually make it lighter rather than darker. Poppy head here. Let's get that 
that ink again to do the This pen isn't working very well. I'm going to swap to a different one. Um, I've got just a regular dip pen here. Let's see how that works. On the other hand, let's try the mapping pen, which is here. Let's see whether that works any better. Now we want some nice, soft um, browns for the nuts here. And then they've got kind of green sort of hats, so we'll use some olive green and some quinacridone for that. Another one of these like that down there. Some ink. And then some spiky bits using this pencil. Just to give us some nice darks. And that will dry lighter and then I think we'll put some some greens over here for these ivy leaves this is olive green again scratch in our veins Maybe we'll put a nice bright leaf in here with the vermilion, maybe one behind here too, perhaps up here. Carry that orange down a little bit. Sort of make it kind of just a general sort of oranginess. And this I was planning on making into a sort of, um, uh, oh, we did a seed head like that before where we did it with cotton buds. And um, I'm just wondering where my cotton buds are. Okay, I found them. 
Now I'm going to dip uh, the cotton bud into the sepia ink and uh, then I'll just try it out a piece of paper to make sure it's okay. And then I'm going to just dot in some round things on here. And then I'm going to hope that this time the ink pen, the, the glass pen works because what I want to do is come from the center out. I don't know why this pen isn't working. It just goes to show it was working very well until recently and now it isn't. Strange, very strange. I'm wondering if it's the ink. Hmm. Okay, so we will improvise. I just want to make a sort of scratchy pattern. I don't care really what I do it with. So we'll do it with a pencil. And I want to do the same down here as well. So we do this first, and then I'll do it with the pencil. I like this pencil anyway. I actually um, find drawing uh, more liberating than painting, actually. I like painting, but I also like drawing. Okay, so now we have got a what you might call border and I want to try to do the, um, the border, I mean, around the edges and now I'm going to try and do the um, spider's web. And that I was planning to do with white ink and I was planning to do it with my uh, Glass pen, but glass pen seems to have gone on strike. So let's try it with mapping pen. We're going to have a I'm pretty sure this will dry okay. It's going to dry much lighter anyway. 
So it'll just be a kind of effect. And I think I might, um, what might I do here? I want to make something a little bit more in the middle there. <clears throat> um, I think we could do a sort of splash of a thistle, a thistle tuft. Let's put a thistle tuft here and then some brown, a very nice dark brown burnt umber. How about that? Let's see what that turns out like for the bottom of the thistle. And you can soften up some of these seed heads down here with some more shadowy bits like that. And here too, just put some water in onto the pencil and it gives it more strength. Then I want to put, again, some vermilion berries in here on top. So we've got a nice lot of reds and browns. And, you know, you can add as much as you want to this. Keep going, stop, whatever. I'm feeling that that is a bit dark compared to rest of it, so I'm just going to knock that back a bit with some white. And hopefully that will dry down a bit. At this point you have to stop and look and think whether or not you want to uh, change what you've done, add to it. I mean, I'm just doing this as I'm going along. I had no particular uh, exact plan ahead of time. So, you know, as you know, we came from a sketch and a vague idea. And at this point, um, I always find that I can't really see what I've done very well, so I have to wait a bit, come back in a few minutes and see, or even the next day, and see whether I like what I've done, see whether I feel I need to add more to it or whether that would spoil things or whatever. And um, so that's where I am at the moment. So I'm going to stop for a bit, finish my coffee, come back and uh, wind up. Okay, so I think I'm going to call that done, except for the fact that I am going to add a little bit of spatter, um, just to liven it up a little bit, and uh, especially there, and down here where we've got the more restful area, and maybe a little bit up here near to those 
um, blueberries. And then what I quite like to do sometimes is just to break some of that spatter up and let that uh, just mix and mingle. Just to give the eye something restful to rest on. It's kind of a combination of sharp and uh, in focus and out of focus. Yeah? That's the thing. So there we are. There's the final painting. Hope you enjoyed watching me create that. That was from scratch. Didn't know where that was going. Hadn't done anything like that before. So um, I hope that was uh, helpful for you. We've learned a lot of new techniques there, practiced a lot of techniques that we've looked at before. So hopefully that will be helpful for you. Um, if you want the sketch for this, I will be putting it up on dianeanton.com. So head on over there and you can download the sketch free of charge. And while you're there, take a look at our shop. We've got some gifts in there now. We've got uh, the beginning of a range of notebooks, which are for um, ideas and things like that as you're doing your painting or just as any old notebook. Um, and also some lovely mugs, which have got my designs on the outside of them. So um, that's the beginning of our um, gift offering as we come up towards Christmas. And um, yeah, over there also there's the blog and that will tell you all about this painting and the things that I used for it with links to the various different products if you wish to track something down for yourself. So I will uh, let you go now and say goodbye. And uh, the cat, Arthur, has slept like a little Trojan all the way through this this morning, which is really good. That's his bedroom. It's full of toys and food and everything, so. Okay. I'll say goodbye now. Bye-bye.